Okay, glad you're along tonight, hour two. We're going to talk to Dr. Bill Deagle this hour, so sit down and put on your seatbelts. A lot of information coming your way. The latest from Fukushima, by the way, is the hourly release rate of ad admitted radiation is now 70 million becquerels per hour. That's the admitted amount. That's just what they're talking about in the air, not what's being flushed out in the ocean. It was 60 million an hour a month or two ago. It's gone up to 70 million. TEPCO says, oh, that's because workers are in there stirring up the dirt and dust and bringing it out of the plant with them. Uh, sorry, these people have absolutely no conscience whatsoever. They're killers, and they're killing us. Remember, the Pacific Ocean is, is finished. It's toast. If you study ocean currents for even five minutes on the Internet, you'll understand there's a very intricate circulatory system all throughout this body of living water and animal life. And that circulatory system is carrying radioactivity all over the Pacific. Northern Pacific, granted. Not below the equator yet. But it's on the West Coast. It's in Canada. The Canadians have studied this, the government, but they will not release the results to the public. Bill, welcome back to the program. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jeff. Uh, lots of updates. Uh, one of the most remarkable things happened in the last few days, and I was kind of puzzled. And then I listened to the clips or later today from Michael Collins. I think, my gosh, he's found the same thing up in Santa Monica as I found here in North County, San Diego. Right. Which is the radiation level dropped for the first time, consistently stayed down. Not at you know what we call base level or background level which is normally around 22 to 26, but it stayed around 30 to 32 and hasn't popped up for a couple of days. And I said, hmm, this is strange. Because we know that reactor number four, uh, Box Cooling Pool, had an earthquake that caused disruption of a pipe on January 2nd. Yeah, broke and it. And it was radi radioactive plutonium detected as far east as all mm -hmm. the way to eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. And we know that the radiation has been detected in the fall, right before Christmas, of radioiodine 131 was not from a local reactor in Eastern Europe or Western Europe, an old-style, Chernobyl-style reactor from the Russian era, <clears throat> the era of the Soviet Empire. And these old doddering reactors, by the way, are still there. But it's not them. No, what's going on is Fukushima, I think, is now actually tunneled so deep into the ground that we're going to have several things happen. The first is, this has not gone away. The nuclear critical reactions are continuing. <clears throat> so what we're having is the corium is so deep it's building up pressure, yeah. and it's going to cause one of several types of things. Number one is the hydrovolcanic explosion where it generates enough pressure you literally get an explosion like a volcano. Uh, number one. Number two is it's going to cause superheated steam that will vent for kilometers away from uh -huh. the site. They could pop up in a schoolyard or a road or anywhere. Sure. And, of course, because it's only a few hundred yards from the ocean, it's probably going to vent directly into the ocean floor. And we know that about 83% of the radioactivity by estimates of air currents and water currents was dumped directly into the Pacific or went east toward us and toward Europe. 83%? That's your, that's your figure? That's 83? the estimate I've heard from my scientists that they figure around 83% mm. went directly eastward into the mm. ocean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the other thing is that the local radiation that pushed up on the coastline continues to be pushed back and forth by wave action and gets vaporized. So it goes five to seven kilometers in. So if you can taste the seawater in the air, you know that you're also getting nanoparticles of radioisotopes. Oh, that's what we talked about last night. Now, of yeah. course, the, the the Humboldt current, which carries it toward uh, North America and goes splits, it goes north toward Alaska and then down toward the Baja California. Mm -hmm. There's another set of currents that people may or may not be aware of that could be the reason why we've detected that radiation off of the east coast of Australia. And it's that there are connections between the, the jet stream <clears throat> and connections between high altitude rivers in the in the upper stratosphere, and uh, the stratospheric uh, ocean of water, or rivers of water, and there's about six major ones. But mm -hmm. the, one of the major ones in the Pacific Ocean carries 100 times more water per day than the Amazon, which is the biggest river on Earth. So there's a potential that those particles get in that upper atmosphere, and these rivers do cross the equator. They're not controlled like the trade wind at Correct. the equatorial yeah. area. They yeah. cross the equator, which means I've got an engineer now in Bill Obama. There's also a report now in Australia. So you wonder, are some of these 
is they're somehow now getting a connection between the radiation levels at lower altitudes, getting into these high altitude super rivers, if you want to call it, that carry, you know, billions of, of cubic miles of water every day, more than the Amazon, all over the upper atmosphere of the Earth. <clears throat> right? Exactly. So that's one of the questions. You have to ask, start asking questions like, what is it? Why did it go all of a sudden back to background? When I heard that Michael Collins saw the same thing I was testing every day, and I went outside and did a couple of tests with the rain, because it's been raining here lately, and I figured, oh, it's radioactive. Mm -hmm. I went out and tested during the rain the last three days. It's like, oh, it's not. This is weird. It didn't go up at all. I mean, mm -hmm. like, what's going on here? But before, when I do it, you'd see it just go bump, 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 and it go crazy. And of course, you know, it's very t easy to take a few materials and determine it's alpha, beta, and gamma, because you can stop some of the radiation particles very quickly with very simple things like a piece of paper and other mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm which is relatively simple to do. <clears throat> so you can get an estimate of whether or not the predominance is a certain type of particle, but it doesn't tell you what the isotope is unless you have a advanced technology like the nuclear engineering department that's now shut down at UC Berkeley. So uh, Fukushima, if this is cold shutdown, then we're in hell. Oh, it's not cold. It's, it's so crazy. Cold. These people in Japan have, you know, they, if, they, if they want to get another job, they need to get a job at SNL, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, because they're either crazy or they're comedian. Well, the the amazing thing is the discipline of the Japanese people to walk in lockstep with what they're told to do. Now there are some demonstrations, but it's a small amount. Meanwhile, you got children not growing, you got cerebral malfunctions being misdiagnosed and hidden by the government. Obviously, it's mass radioactive poisoning. But the right. people are being sacrificed, and they are literally marching to their own graves without complaining much. It's, it's sickening. It's just sickening. Well, you, you wonder if it's, uh, you wonder if it's uh, several things. Firstly, people should realize that Japan has more nuclear reactors per square surface mile than anywhere else. That's weird. And, and every nuclear reactor has been vending off radioisotopes for years. So you wonder, is it due to cultural issues? Is it due to chronic radiation? Or, or, is, it or is it due to chronic exposure to radiation? Right. Because, for example... Most people don't, aren't aware of this, but all, that means not just some, not just the majority, all yeah. nuclear reactors vent off of these tritium and other radioisotopes on a regular basis. They don't have, they have cross connections, they have problems between the central core reactor cooling system and the external systems that put water back onto a bay or cooling pond or whatever outside the reactor. So the idea that somehow these, this has been happening, so you can actually show that there are zones of illness up to about 120 miles around any reactor anywhere. So if you draw circles around every reactor in Japan, pretty well every square mile in Japan is a pretty high concentration of being vented uh, tritium, strontium, and ra other radioisotopes like cesium uh, for a long time, long before Fukushima. It's amazing. So, so, uh, uh, by the way, I, the, I'm just the, speculating because I, I know that their behavior doesn't seem no, rational. No, well, they've all, according to Yochi, this is kind of the, the ethic of the Japanese culture. This goes back to World War II. They, they, uh, they'll die for the emperor. They do what they're told. This, is, of course, has changed, uh, but there's still something going on there that is, is not common to our culture here at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they just don't get out and raise there. hell like, like we used to at any rate. Okay, yeah. William, go right ahead. While we were uh, actually talking, I got to... Email from one of the listeners live in the show. It's great to hear that people are actually listening, and hopefully they're doing two things, asking better questions and getting pissed. And, of course, this is a former worker for Southern California Edison Nuclear Steam Electrician. Oh. It, were we working at Unit 1 of uh -huh. the Songs facility in the 80s? Uh -huh. And he said in the term, he said, well, we were, quote, craft up, meaning nuclear slang for contaminated, and zoomies were the slang name for neutrinos and other radionuclides that would poison us. It was tritium, and we were told that it was harmless, even though oh, it got geez. in our lungs. Oh, geez. The union hands he, worked at Santa, he was at San Onofre? Yeah, Santa, okay. yeah. Okay. Anyway, the union hands prided themselves with the overtime breathing out the tritium in the badge out areas. You had to sit there and breathe out the tritium before you were able to, to, oh, to go home. Unreal. Uh, and, and, but it was not prepared to wait for several hours sitting, so I would stand on my hands and breathe it out in about 20 minutes. And his question was, is tritium that harmful? in your lungs? Well, let me explain what tritium is. Tritium is heavy water. And the way the tritium works on a molecular level in your DNA is it displaces the codons of your DNA by one base pair. 
Now, people think that's not much, one water molecule, heavy water molecule. But water molecules that have extra uh, protons don't act like water molecules. They basically, or uh, not, I mean neutrons, they move the, the base pairs of the DNA over one base, and that extra neutron, what it does, even though it doesn't have a charge, it makes the DNA not able to, to exactly replicate that codon, so you get a, an abnormal amino acid replacing the one because of that. So it causes point mutation. So, and all the beer plants give off radiation. Now, I was mentioning also how you can measure the effects of some of the things like electromagnetic pollution and so on. That, that's There's amazing the, what that man wrote in the email, that they actually yeah. used to make them wait 20 minutes so they breathed out all the tritium. Yeah, now here's why you can <laughs> measure. If you want to measure the effect, for example, there's a simple test. When they went after Chernobyl, and they had to take quite a while because you have to do what's called scanning electron microscopy, you can actually take a skin biopsy or a biopsy of the mouth or some other tissue that's rapidly replicating, and you just take a simple slide and put it under a scanning EM and you look for what's called micronuclei. Micronuclei are basically chunks of DNA that are kind of evaginated off the cell and then the cell extrudes them and they get in the extracellular space and they can actually replicate in that space. You get big chunks, a whole lot of this micronuclei, a little evaginated with its own cell membrane around it, floating around the space in the between the cells and in the lymphatics. So if you actually looked, were able to draw the lymphatic fluid off, you'd see a whole pile of micronuclei there. That's number one. Number two, you're going to see the presence of very high levels of oxidative stress markers, things like a thing called 8-hydroxy-2 prime deoxyguanosine, which is oxidized guanosine, one of the base pairs in your DNA. And you're going to also see uh, levels of oxidized fatty acids called T-bars. So these tests can be done. People say, oh, you can't measure it. You can also look at the profile of the specific tissues it's going to go to because you can do a radioisotope scan. You can actually put them through a radioisotope scan like the one we do for medical tests, and you can find out over a period of time where those radioisotopes are going to concentrate. And certain ones like strontium uh, go directly to the bone. Stasium goes directly into, say, women to the breast and to the glandular tissues because it's an analog of potassium. Strontium is an analog of calcium. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's all kinds of ways of doing this, but nobody, the EPA, the CDC, nobody's doing testing on anything, whether it's... And that's why this is so damn dangerous. The human race isn't going to be able to reproduce another generation. We're basically looking to, if we don't stop what we're doing, at the Correct. peak of what human beings... And this, be. this could be the uh, beginning of the uh, uh, irrevocable decline. Well, it's like the Children of Men movie that came out just about a decade ago. We're, we're, we're looking at a scenario, and I saw this coming decades ago, and I said, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think human beings are going to wake up to this. No, it's too late. And it's I remember being late. out in the oceans back in 1973, and I was out there doing my oceanography research before I went into medicine, mm-hmm. and I remember seeing bunker sea oil balls from being oil being dumped from the bilges of the ships 500 miles out in the ocean. I thought, my gosh, I saw seals trapped with plastic around their neck and all kinds of garbage. Yeah. There's a garbage patch that's three times the size of Texas just under the water surface in the North Pacific. And now it we've is, got yeah. the Humboldt current radioactive from mm-hmm. Fukushima. Mm-hmm. I mean, human beings, it's not a matter of if we lived properly in balance with the Earth, we could easily have 50 billion people safely on the planet with the ecosystems. Point of no return is past, but, in my view. I'm yeah, sorry. it's also the, it's a pollution. It's also our lifestyle. That's what I'm it saying. It wouldn't matter if we only had a million people on the Earth if we lived like this. Exactly. Eventually... Exactly the planet will die. And what we're doing, we're also seeing the planet is going through what I call, <laughs> George Carlin said, the wet dog shakes of the planet. And you see all these earthquakes happening. In fact, I just got another emergency yeah. report that there's one that they expect to happen not too far south of here, near Encinitas, uh, on the Baja, California. Uh-huh. And the reason is, they had a Chiapas 6.2 quake just the other day. They've had all these other big quakes occurring, and we're kind of next on the list because the San Andreas Fault, they don't call it the San Andreas when it gets across the U.S.-Mexican border. They call it something else. But guess what? There's been a whole bunch of really big quakes, like 7, 7.2 in the last year, down at the southern end of the, of the San Andreas Fault system, south of the U.S.-Mexican border. Now, why is this happening? It's happening because we are entering the midpoint of the transition, which takes about 30 years, roughly, to what's called the gravity wave of the galactic plane of the galaxy. All right, what, uh, before we run out of time, I'm sure a lot of people would like to get your take. Hold on to that galactic wave. Yeah, and that, uh, that's going to precipitate more earthquakes okay. and, and volcanoes. The sound.